came from outer space to fill the world with terror. What earthly power can stop this terror? That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop. The Bloodhounds. From outer space. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast from outer space. It's your boy Rob Scott. We got Adam Narlock in the house tonight. Hey guys, thanks for listening. And as always, it's Ryan Scott. Greetings, Earthlings. Tonight, hopping on to another cryptid, we got the Mothman for you. Yes, this will be the second installment of our cryptid series. Uh, We are covering the legendary Mothman. Now, you know, anyone who's heard of the Mothman uh, or seen the 2002 movie Mothman Prophecies, they know the basic plot, the stories, the origins in West Virginia. Now, we're going to cover all of that in this episode, and we're also going to dive into some more bizarre aspects. Uh, We'll give you a little bit of the facts about the creature himself, uh, some background, history of the sightings, uh, theories um, to other strange events, and of course, some UFO alien talk for good measure. Mm. Now, so, um, you know, it's no secret. Uh, We're all from uh, Virginia. You know, right there by West Virginia. Um, What do you guys basically know about the Mothman? Like, what did did you guys hear the tales growing up? I think uh, was the Mothman. You guys remember the cartoon The Tick? Yes. The blue guy was Mothman, like his sidekick, or am I the Moth? Maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, I don't think that it was any relation. I feel like there's a moth. Yeah, well, I don't think so, but I'm just saying. <laughs> we will have to look it up to I'm gonna, confirm. Okay, well, that's that's all I have for moth. Are you thinking of, <laughs> well, are you thinking of no, Mothra, like Godzilla? No, no, no. No, there's the Tick's sidekick, Moth. I'm about to look. <laughs> that it, was it, his, his name? That's his name. It's Mothman. His name is that's not what it Moth. Said. The Tick and Mothman, bitch. It's right here. Mothman, not <laughs> Moth. But I don't think that's based off of uh, the Mothman. You, that's just too much of a coincidence for me. Look at it. Look at this guy. The Tick kind of sucked anyways, dude. Dude. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, We're that's another episode. The tick out of the bus. <laughs> so... Uh, I mean, you guys didn't hear any stories of this shit growing up. I remember hearing about... When was the first time you guys heard about the Mothman? The legendary Mothman? <sighs> Not the cartoon Mothman. Not I feel the like, cartoon okay. Mothman. I feel like I definitely heard more about Jersey Devil than the Mothman. Yeah, I agree. Because that's more of like a recurring urban legend. To be fair, I feel like Jersey's closer to the 757 than Point Pleasant, really. I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, but I feel also that Mothman, it, just in West Virginia, that kind of like came and went, and now everyone in West Virginia is trying to cash in on that shit. Well, yeah, I mean, they still got the festival and everything, um, but you guys never heard any stories growing up about it? I always associate West Virginia with like wrong turn. Okay. So, so, so obviously, I'm assuming neither of you have been to Point Pleasant. I have not. Would like to go next time I'm back home, though. I've driven through. I don't know that I've ever been to Point Pleasant. Okay. Now, well, now that I know, maybe, yeah, next time we go home. Take a pic with the old statue downtown. Yeah, I, sh- um, I actually know one guy who's been, uh, shout out Bobby Bones, if he's listening. Uh, he went up there and visited the TNT area and everything. Um, Should have probably consulted him about this episode. He brought all the beers. <laughs> yeah, so... Did he also bring a surfboard, dude? <laughs> getting into uh, some of our sources for this one, we've got... We were going to cite uh, Mothman Prophecies, which is the book by John Keel, which kind of launched this whole cryptid into uh, the fame that is known as today. Um, Strange Creatures from Time and Space, also by John Keel. Um, a documentary called titled Mothman of Point Pleasant. And the interview titled A Man Called Cold. So, you know, let's get right into it. Uh, Mothman himself. The basic facts are this. So, the Mothman, as it became known, is basically described as a winged humanoid creature with bright reflective uh, or sometimes described as glowing red eyes. Um, He is known to have features similar to an owl. However, his wings are more bat-like. Take a look at the bat wing, bitch. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, so uh, if for our male listeners, make your ball sack flat like paper <laughs> and 
There's the Mothman's wings. Uh, now, typically described uh, black or gray in color, uh, estimated around seven to eight feet tall. Some say as high as 10 feet tall. Uh, wingspan anywhere from 10 to 20 feet. Uh, some even say he appears headless with the eyes and the upper chest of the creature. So, you know, really he doesn't even resemble a moth at all. Uh, it's, I guess this is just one of those nicknames that just sort of stuck, uh, you know. Didn't want to call him Batman. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> some, He's already taken. Yeah, sometimes uh, he is described as having feathers. Other times uh, hairless with a dark gray skin tone, like one of those uh, skinless uh, cats Ooh. or like a naked mole rat a hairless cat or yeah, a skinless cat I, I mean a hairless Ew. cat uh, so his face has never really been described in great detail it is also reported that those who get close to the mothman suffer from bouts of fear and psychological distress lasting anywhere from days to months and in some cases years after the encounters I believe that yeah oh yeah You've seen the Mothman? Well, no, but doing research for this, I had a psychological and fearful <laughs> event that followed. Hey, me so. too, actually. See? This one, I think, kind of gave us all the spooks, the heebie-jeebies, if you will. Got them goosebumps uh, every time. Yeah, I mean, more so than our artificial intelligence episode, which really freaked me out. Um, so, you know, we'll get in, right into uh, the most famous account. Um now, obviously, anyone who is familiar with Mothman knows the West Virginia story. Uh, this is by far the most famous account made popular by John Keel in his book, The Mothman Prophecies. Uh, this chronicles the events and sightings that led up to the Silver Bridge collapse in 1967. Now, the basic tale is this. This all started in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Not to be confused with Point Place, Wisconsin. Hello, Wisconsin. Now, it has been said that uh, this place was largely avoided by Native Americans in pre-European America, as it seemed to be a negative force haunting the hills and valleys. Uh, some say this is due to ley lines. Now, are you guys familiar with ley lines? Never heard of it. Vaguely familiar. So these are basically like... Um, Alignments of landforms, you know, places of ancient religious significance or culture, uh, often including man-made structures, uh, straight paths or routes in the landscape, which are believed to have spiritual significance. Mm. Um, and one thing I was reading says this was due to the two rivers converging. Apparently, this is like a big no-no in uh, Native American, um, you know. Culture? Yeah. So, um as Point Pleasant lies on the Ohio and Kanawha River intersection, um, you know, it lies right there at the uh, convergence of these two rivers. <laughs> and uh, apparently that's like, you know, you got to stay away from that if what you're if, Native American. What if three rivers converge like in Pittsburgh? Is that okay? Well, that's nope. probably not okay. It's probably why. Probably a piece of shit. Oh, okay. Mr. <laughs> Philadelphia over there. Okay. I, well, I actually was reading... Actually, I don't know if I was reading. Maybe it was in the documentary. You can't even read. <laughs> I, can't, I can't read. Um, it was saying that because of the spiritual significance, a lot of the times the Native Americans would use the sites where the rivers converged as the burial grounds. Okay. All like right. when Pittsburgh buried Philadelphia in the outdoor game when we went there. Tell me you didn't have a good time in my city. I did at the game. You my had a city. good time. Pittsburgh. Who are you? Yeah, he's from Pittsburgh, guys. Okay, apparently. I went Terry to Terry Bradshaw. I <laughs> <laughs> got okay. the fridge over here, guys. Okay. So, uh, so this all can go back to the legend of Cornstalk. Now, this guy, Chief Hokoleskawa. Wow, that was bad. Okay, why don't you give it a try? I'm not going to try. Okay, <laughs> okay <laughs> fuck yourself. Hokoleskwa. Hokoleskwa. Uh, also known as corn stalk. Yes, loosely Much translates easier. to stalk of corn. Yeah, um, I can't say that. I'm just going to call you corn stalk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, corn stalk. Corn stalk. Hey, corn stalk. <laughs> hey, uh, so this guy was the leader of the Shawnee Nation uh, back in the 16th century. That's the 1700s, right? Uh, 1500s. 
16th huh? century would be 1500s so then you what is the 1700s one. the 18th century okay 18th century okay uh leader of the shawnee nation back in the 18th century i knew a um, girl named shawnee one time basically Wiz Khalifa over uh, here, in short this guy he he didn't want uh the damn whites settling <laughs> past the ohio river and uh later he became an advocate for peace after the battle of point pleasant which took place in 1774 so this is like some last of the mohicans type shit you know i mean 20 years after give or take but uh think about that as he wanted to keep his people uh neutral during the revolutionary uh you know this is understandable revolutionary war you know it's a white man's war he wants to keep his his people safe so uh he goes basically he goes to fort randolph which is uh present day point pleasant uh for a diplomatic meeting and uh he's pretty much taken captive by some like dipshit captain guy um and word gets out that uh one of the militia men at the fort was killed uh by a what was believed to be Shawnee, but has been confirmed as unknown Indians. And, uh, I mean, you know, it's like the Wild West out there. Fucking Indians are killing people. Wild West right. Virginia. Yeah. So, uh... Will Smith is up there. Basically, they find out about this militia being killed. These guys brutally murdered Cornstalk and his son and two other Shawnee. And, uh, these guys, these guys went to trial, but got off due to no one testifying against them. You know? Um... And Cornstalk was buried at the fort. Then in 1840, his remains were exhumed and he was moved to uh, the courthouse. And then in 1954, they moved this guy again because the Mm. courthouse was torn down. And, you know, already, you know, fucking with Indian bones, this is this is never good. Never good to fuck with a dead in general, dude. I don't I don't know any culture that's okay with it. Yeah. Oof, oof. And, uh, you know, some say that Cornstalk put a curse on the town with his dying breath. Although um, no historical record specifically mentioned this curse. Uh, others say the Mothman was Cornstalk's spirit his spirit's way of revenge uh, as they kept moving his remains. You know, this guy can't catch a break. Shawnee is starting to sound a lot like Pawnee, Indiana. (laughs) A lot of uh, sitcom references. (laughs) So, uh, in 19... Mainly all because they just started calling him (laughs) Cornstalk. So, the modern day sightings uh, can be traced back in West Virginia to um, starting as early as 1961. Now, keep in mind, they moved this guy's bones in 54. So, you know, a couple years later, 1961. A couple years? (laughs) Seven. Be cool. Yeah, come on. So, several years later, 1961, uh, West Virginia woman reported seeing a man in the middle of the road while driving along the Ohio River. And uh, this is an excerpt from about this account from uh, John Keel's book, Strange Creatures from Time and Space. As we go closer, we could see that it was much larger than a man, a big gray figure. It stood in the middle of the road, then a pair of wings unfolded from its back, and they practically filled the whole goddamn road. It almost looked like a small airplane, then took off straight up disappearing out of sight in seconds we were both terrified i stepped on the gas and raced out of there we talked it over and decided not to tell anyone about it who would have believed us anyway so you know that is traced back as an early mothman sighting but i don't think this one was ever documented as specifically mothman um and you know there was numerous like uh many sightings over the next couple years like from 61 till 66 when they really started to ramp up i you know like kids come in and be like mommy i saw an angel was like one of the ones i was reading about you know shit huh. like that that you didn't really like hindsight's 2020 you know and um so the first recorded mothman sighting to be in the papers took place in uh on november 12th 1966 around Clendenin, 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 West Virginia. Uh, Out there in Clendenin, folks. Yep, uh, up there in Clendenin, West Virginia. So five men were in a cemetery digging a grave when they saw um, flying out from above the nearby tree line was a large winged humanoid creature. Uh, All of these men hold the belief that this was not a bird, but specifically recall a flying humanoid. So, I mean, you know, maybe these guys are out there digging graves and smoking dope. I mean, could have been a bird, right? 
drinking a, a little plane. yoo-hoo yeah you know we don't know you know who's Rumpelstiltskin <laughs> these guys you know who knows what they really saw you know I mean the mind plays tricks on you they saw the Mothman you're gonna see what you wanna believe uh, they saw I mean, the Batwing bitch <laughs> yeah they specifically said this guy was a flying humanoid so um, three days after this uh, sighting in the graveyard took place, uh, reports came in from two young couples um, who also claimed to have encountered the same description as the first report. So uh, Roger and Linda Scarberry were driving in Roger's 57 Chevy Bel Air. Badass car, dude. Okay. Uh, so they were driving with Steve and Mary mallet and uh they were driving through the tnt area what do you think they were doing up there so tnt area i mean trying to blow some stuff what's that tnt area all about the uh tnt area is like an old rundown set of bunkers i believe used back in pre-world war ii to uh as an ammunitions factory yeah, I thought it was an ammunitions factory during World War II. That's and then it shut ready. down shortly after. Okay. Fun fact, the developers of the TNT area, also developers of Area 51. Mm. Coincidence? I think not. Sounds like another episode in the future. Well, we'll Sounds get like into that in our theories. Yeah, mm. this is a total conspiracy. Guilty as charged with the <laughs> theory. So, you know, around this area, they were driving, and uh, it was about midnight, so Linda noticed two large glowing red eyes beside the old power plant and screamed. Uh, they soon learned that these eyes belonged to something that looked, frankly, human. Uh, about seven feet tall with wings folded against its back. Um, so Adam, you want to read the actual tale of this encounter? The true horror began, however when the creature spread its wings and pursued them down Highway 62 to the Point Pleasant city limits at speeds exceeding 100 miles an hour. The four arrived in town, startled and confused, and with no sign of the mysterious bird that had chased them, Roger parked his car at the edge of town and they discussed their encounter, eventually deciding that what they saw was nothing more than an aberrant bird, and in an attempt to face their fears, they again drove towards the TNT area. Already a bad idea. Yeah, that's probably just a bird. Let's go back and check it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, curiosity killed the cat. Hey, it wasn't long before they saw the creature again, apparently waiting on them beside Route 62. The couples now realized that their stalker was no bird, but in the instant that the car's headlights landed on the creature, it lifted vertically into the air with tremendous speed and disappeared above the tree line. This time, when they arrived into town, they went to Mason County Courthouse and told the story to the sheriff, George Johnson, and Deputy Miller Halstead. Two hours later, city police began investigating the area, only to return empty-handed. The next day, a press conference was held, and the local press began printing the story, causing others to come forward with previous and future sightings. This was a major event that started it all. In the November 16th issue of the Point Pleasant Register, the strange encounter would be brought to the public eye with the headline, Couple Sees Man-Sized Bird Creature Something. Yeah, so this is by far the most famous encounter. Um, now, I mean, you know, we've all been there. Uh, you know, we've all been young. Uh, you know, let's fucking drive out to these old country roads. Let's see some crazy shit. Heard about this fucking crazy house. I mean, you guys, I mean, you guys got stories like this, right? Driving out to the old ammunitions factory. What was that place? I know that me, you, and Billy went out to one place and I was like super skeptical. That I, abandoned house? No, it was like a tree where someone supposedly got in an accident. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Elbow Road. Elbow Road, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very like, creepy legend. The, no, the chick drowned in that lake. Is that what it was? And then and you're supposed to, at that turn, you're supposed to be able to like see the ghost. Yeah. We drove by it like five fucking times. So many <laughs> times sneaking out the house and driving with Billy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, every town has their little like legends and lore, you know? Um, so basically, uh, the Mothman would be seen on and off throughout the next 13 months in Point Pleasant and the surrounding areas. Uh, it was estimated there were over 100 sightings within this time, although a number of these are unidentifiable reports and ac the actual number of confirmed reported sightings may be quite lower. 
I think after like the papers started reporting on it, um, the reports just started flooding in because you know everybody wants their like you know fifteen minutes of fame. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is this like we talked about on our UFO episodes? Like uh, once it starts becoming a media frenzy, you know, boom, more people start you know faking it. So possible BS factor with some of these reports, you know, a hundred more or less sightings. No social media back then. Yeah, everybody. The newspaper is the way to get your attention, man. So. Throughout the timeline of the sightings, uh, many Mothman witnesses were also harassed by the men in black who uh, wanted them not to speak about what they had seen. Now, we're not talking about the comic book Men in Black. We're not no, talking about no Will, Will Smith, Smith. No, no Will Tommy Smith, Lee Jones. No Tommy Lee Jones. This is the real Men in Black. Now, um, this, I think, deserves a full episode in the future, which we'll really dig into. But, I mean, quick synopsis, if you don't know the real men in black, uh, they're basically these strange guys in black suits, and uh, black shoes, black tie, white shirts. Uh, these are the guys coming around every Sunday trying to get me to go to their oh, church? Yeah, yeah, Mormons. Oh. Uh, these guys, they're like, <laughs> think about the Blues Brothers. Um, black shades uh, they're often reported in areas where ufos have been spotted and these guys show up and basically tell people to shut the fuck up about it you know these guys are often reported as having weird behavior uh they look and act really strange uh they have strange eyes uh never blink uh they just have blank expressionless faces like rob yeah <laughs> so, uh, wow. some are reported uh wearing air force or army uniforms but like air force ones but like little insignias being in the wrong place or like one piece of the uniform being not quite right. Uh, some say they themselves are alien disguised as humans. Government shills. As the, uh, the men in black are said to have strange eating behaviors as well. Uh, witnesses say they don't know how to use, like in the uh, Mothman Prophecies book, they don't know how to use a knife or fork. Uh, one of the witnesses had to actually come over and show this guy how to cut a steak. Uh, they didn't chew their food. They just kind of swallowed it. This reminded Ugh. me of uh, <laughs> little Nicky. <laughs> Let the <laughs> chicken slide down your throat. Like when he's trying to teach him how to eat. Popeye's um, chicken is fucking One awesome. of the stories I saw in like a Men in Black encounter, I don't think it was in Point Pleasant, but it was this lady like he came in to ask her about this UFO she had seen and like she offered him some jello which right off the bat i think is a little odd this mm. lady hey you want some jello this is 60s and this guy tried oh, you're to, here harassing this me. guy take yeah some of my jello. this guy had never seen jello like he tried to drink it when's the last time you saw jello outside of a shooter yeah but i still know how to eat a fucking thing of jello <laughs> <laughs> he just likes to party and he yeah. thought it was a shot he thought it was a jello shot he's way before his time um so one story we actually did pull from the Mothman Prophecies book. This is the story of Connie Carpenter's Men in Black encounter. Rob, you want to go ahead and read this one for us? 8.15 a.m. on February 22nd, 1967. Mothman witness Connie Carpenter was walking to school when a black 49 Buick pulls up alongside her. The driver opens his door and asks her for directions. He seemed to be a clean-cut young man about 24 or so with thick neatly combed black hair and a deep suntan this sounds bad already can i just say <laughs> okay this is like pre creeper van oh yeah, yeah yeah hey it's a 49 buick it's not a fucking <laughs> van it's with not a no panel windows van with a guy with a mustache just sounds bad already when connie got closer to the vehicle the stranger suddenly ordered her to get in and grabbed her by the arm trying to pull her into his car she managed to get away and the sleeve of her blouse was ripped in the process she ran back to her house and locked herself in the next day a threatening note was slipped under her door reading be careful girl i can get you yet so yeah i mean this was is probably the most famous men in black encounter tied to the mothman sightings um it doesn't sound like men in black. It sounds like a stalker. Well, yeah, I mean, cold we, jacket, green jacket. This could have just been a fucking molester, uh, but you know, I mean, kind of creepy. You know, this fits the description. I mean, there's a ton of these other men in black encounters. Um, feel free to read them yourselves. They're all documented. Now, also reported around Point Pleasant area at this time. Um, this was mostly on the Ohio side, uh, where cattle mutilations and numerous lights in the sky or ufo sightings 
Um, now, this next story, this is actually pretty spooky. Uh, I know this creeped me out the first time I read it. Uh, so, you know, we'll jump right into the story of Woody Derenberger and the man called Indrid Cole. Also, a little side note, this was our first ever ever Just Google It uh, in our Stephen King episode. Uh, so the following story is all taken directly from the audio of the Woody Derenberger interview. Uh, so, you know, this is eyewitness testimony. You can find this interview on YouTube about 30 minutes long. Can we do a survey question? Which state is worse, Michigan or Ohio? Because I believe those are the two worst states in the union. You guys been to either of those states? What about Illinois? Illinois is badass. Yeah, Chicago. I mean Indiana. My sister just graduated. From Indiana my Department of Energy. Yeah. Indiana's pretty shitty as hey, well. Hey, wait, no, we can't say that because I just did that burger challenge and they put my picture on the wall with the ad podcast from outer space. Oh, that was in Indiana. That was in Indiana. Okay, yeah. so Indiana's good. Who's your state? Ohio and Michigan. Ohio. Which is, which is worse? Ohio. We'll make it a poll question. I didn't mean to interrupt your story. I'm well, just that's I'm just because that's Rob Ohio. is just not a big Ezekiel Elliott fan. Yeah, Ohio sucks. Urban Meyer's there now. Yeah, he's a bitch. Oh, Rob Deerdeck. Bitch. I'd, oh, <laughs> no, don't edit that out. He's going to promote our podcast. Okay. I'm kidding, dude. Shout out Robbie Diesel. Okay, so this is the story of Woody Derenberger. So um, this guy was a salesman. Uh, he was driving his truck from Marietta, Ohio, to his home in West Virginia at 7 p.m. on the evening of November 2nd, 1966. So this is about 10 days prior to the first reported Mothman sighting in the graveyard. Um, he's headed south down I-77, uh, just before Route 47. Uh, Darren Berger claims a car was following him closely and passed him. Now, behind this car, he says, was an object unidentifiable to him, but resembling a large kerosene lamp chimney. Uh, this object was of charcoal color, about 35 feet long, and floating about uh, six inches off the ground. Um, this was at his level. It was keeping up with his truck. No wheels. Um, it hovered off the ground. No windows. No lights. Uh, it was eerily silent, and there was almost like a quiet fluttering. He says it was like a helicopter, but very low. Um, as it passed him, it began to slowly cut him off uh, and then turn completely sideways, blocking the whole road, giving Derenberger no chance but to slow down and stop. So as he stopped, he says he pulled over uh, you know, on the shoulder, and a door opened. Uh, on this vehicle and a man came out about six feet tall wearing a dark blue glossy metallic suit uh, he lo- he says he looked like a quote unquote normal human with a deep suntan slicked back dark hair uh, and after he stepped out of the door uh, the object went straight up and hovered about 75 feet off the ground over the highway uh, just kind of staying there And uh, this guy walked right up to the right-hand side of his truck and asked him to roll the window down. Said he wanted to talk. He asked, what are you called? And why are you frightened? Uh, We wish you no harm. We are the same as you. We eat and sleep and bleed just like you. Uh, He said he was called cold and asked Derenberger about the city of Parkersburg. Uh, You know, he says he pointed at the city, asked if that's where the people live. Um, you know, he went on to ask him more questions about the town, uh, what he did. Um, he said he was a searcher and Derenberger said that this was all telepathic communication. He claims that Cold's mouth never moved. Uh, he held a smile the whole time. And Derenberger said, uh, Cold told him he could either talk or he could understand his thoughts, um, either one, whichever he preferred. And after their conversation, which lasted about 10 minutes, uh, Cold stepped away from the truck and said, we will see you soon. Uh, He stepped back into the door on the vehicle, uh, and there was another man inside who closed the door, and the vehicle went straight back up into the air until it was out of sight. Mm. Now, Derenberger says he was basically scared shitless uh, this whole time, uh, so he didn't really like ask him any questions back. 
Uh, and in the interview, he says he wish he had. And uh, he believes this was some type of alien craft uh, he saw. Uh, although he says he was a skeptic before, you know, he didn't really believe in all this shit. He thought these guys were all like wackos claiming to see UFOs and stuff. Um, and he reported this to the police and eventually this was picked up by the local media. Now, this guy has basically become known as Indrid Cold and, uh, many people claim to have encountered him and some say he is, uh, one guy, um, you know, others say there are many, um, that look like him, uh, but all the eyewitnesses seem to be very frightened upon encountering him. Um, they believe Indrid Cold is, uh, one of the mysterious men in black or an alien or some unknown species or all of the above uh whenever he has been seen uh there's also ufo sightings disasters or other strange phenomenon that follow the encounters of this guy over the course of the month that followed this encounter uh darren Berger said he uh was visited by injured cold several times uh he took him on his spaceship to his planet and Indrid Cold appeared at uh, Darren Berger's front door. Uh, his wife and children knew who this guy was. Uh, they knew he was paying him visits and eventually came forward saying that they too saw Indrid Cold and other strange beings. Um, Darren Berger's wife was terrified, uh, stating that these beings were like us. They traveled in uh, cars dressed uh, just like us, but were not of human origin. And there was even one time where Mr. Derenberger disappeared for six months, said he was with injured cold. But this was, and this is what uh, members of his family actually believed. Sounds like this guy's a mastermind and he's just out banging whores. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he just Good. got one of his buddies. He said, hey, I ran into this alien. He looks just like a human, though. <laughs> and then this guy shows up at his door and he's like, oh, this is the guy. Now, yeah, that could be, uh, you know. I got, he's, I got to go back to his planet for six months, so I'm not going to be around. <laughs> Have fun taking care of the kids, though, all hey, right, honey? Yeah, I'm going to be taking off for about six <laughs> months uh, with this weird guy. I don't know anything about him. Going but, uh, to his home planet? Yeah. Injury uh, needs me. Yeah, he says something about a uh, spaceship, you know. Um, so, you know, this story gained a lot. Oh, he, he, so he also said he would receive mental messages uh, from Indrid Cold, and they would come suddenly leaving piercing migraine headaches. Oh, mental, all right. Yeah, this story gained uh, a lot of media attention, and locals would flock to this guy's house all hours of the day and night. Um, there would be crowds in his driveway just to catch, catch a glimpse of this guy. Uh, now, Derenberger eventually decided to seek medical attention, at the opinion of his psychiatrist, and he not only this left... seen a psychiatrist, you know he's crazy. Yeah, but this guy left with a clean bill of health, no evidence of a chemical imbalance or disruption, and, um... If you know, he's got psychiatrist money, you know he's also got, a uh, butthole hair removal money. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Just saying, he's flossing, he's balling. Okay, so I mean, this over guy, this guy's overall experience was extremely negative um, for him and his family, and even his close friends. He says there was, uh, you know, there was years of harassing phone calls. Uh, he lost jobs. He lost friends. Uh, people were trespassing on his property. You know, ridicule, embarrassment, uh, the migraines, even depression. And he claims that his writings of these encounters and stuff would disappear from his locked house and letters he sent would never reach their destination. And he felt he was being watched. He eventually moved away and uh, years later he moved back to the area but passed away in 1990 at the age of 74. Sounds like some Department of Energy involvement right there, boys. I mean, would this guy go to these lengths to fucking fuck up his whole life based on banging whores? Yes. Sounds like it. <laughs> okay. Although, you know, I did hear when I was watching the documentary, they touched on the injured cold thing since it was about the same time. Apparently, there is a couple of people that also saw him up in New York State. So Yeah, I mean, this guy's been reported, like, all over the place. I mean, we could probably do a whole episode on just this guy. Yeah, but it's, like, the same thing with the Mothman. It's, like, as soon as the media catches it, everyone's trying to hop on that fucking yeah, bandwagon, so the whole, you know? Yeah, so, like, you, you gotta sift through the bullshit. 
So here's a quote from uh, John Keel uh, in the Mothman Prophecies. He says, and I quote, At the time of my first visit to Point Pleasant in 1966, I did not relate the winged weirdo to flying saucers. Uh, Later events not only proved that relationship existed, but that relationship is a vital clue to the whole mystery. You know, I work with a Mr. Keel. I just wonder... If he's of relation. You know, I'm going to have to ask him. No, sir, we are not of relations. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so these strange sightings, uh, you know, Mothman, Indrid Cole, these UFOs, these all seem to uh, culminate in the collapse of the Silver Bridge on December 15th, 1967. Uh, this killed mm. 46 people in total. And it is confirmed that the bridge collapsed due to the failure of a single eye bar, uh, coupled with poor upkeep, years of wear and tear, and uh, carrying much heavier loads than it was designed for. I mean, this thing collapsed with, like, rush hour traffic on it, like, right before Christmas. Um, Well, I was just going to ask if I could tell my story right when you're done. Sure, go ahead and tell it right now. Well, What's no. the story? Well, okay, so Finish yeah, yours. so this bridge collapsed, and these guys, these people were on like rush hour traffic. Um, Forty six people dead. You know, Christmas presents in the water. Horrific scene. I mean, some bodies were found like miles down the river. Why is that funny? Christmas presents in the river. Yes, did you not read yeah. the story? Come yes, on, I did. it's Probably. fucked up. Yeah, do we have any explanation on this? Our lawyer Rob. You know, as this is just a uh, tale as old as time. <laughs> Shout out to Davis. Um, there's actually a bridge back home in Fredericksburg. Same thing. You know, doesn't get the upkeep that it needs. There's always rush hour traffic on it. And one day that thing's just going to fall into the damn river. And it's all because these cities don't want to spend money on road repair. You're unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I right, though? One little thing goes wrong with this bridge, shit collapses into the fucking shit river. Good luck, dude. Did okay. you guys see a video? I some I saw something. This lady said that she had a video where it goes up into the air and then collapses, and I was like, no, "See, I saw like sounds like bullshit." No, 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 yeah, that's bullshit. People had like photographic evidence of the Mothman like chilling on the bridge. Oh, right that before was this all, all bullshit. Too, yeah, yeah, it's also but, bullshit. All right, here's my thing. Normally when I do research for the podcast, like I like to read stuff. Like that's how I am. Like if I'm researching well, yeah, that's something, everything. Well, this guy watches a lot of videos. Oh, true, true, true. So I, I said, you know, I'm so a, you read okay. Wikipedia. I, yeah, I read like source. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to start going down the rabbit hole. But I said I'm going to take the Rob Stone approach this week. I'm going to watch some videos, and I was watching a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of Mothman videos, obviously. And it, you know, some every every ones. one of them had like the same kind of story, exactly, like Point exactly. Pleasant. How the Mothman was actually like a harbinger of like bad news to come, and that that and I truly believe that's what he was because I was watching all these videos, and I think for me, he was trying to tell me that I was about to stumble across some bad news bears, like bad stuff. Because after watching all these videos in my suggested videos playlist, came this one about the Russian sleep deprivation experiment, which apparently is a creepy pasta and not true at all. Yeah, creepypasta popularized on the internet. Okay, but I watched this creepypasta video about the Russian sleep experiment, and I could not sleep. Like, I was freaked out, and I feel like if you ever get some free time to go down that rabbit hole, check Don't. it out. Oh, Don't? definitely. Oh. Do. Yeah, we could probably do some uh, whole whole episode on that as well. Okay, apparently it's not even real, and like all these people are commenting like, this is pussy shit, one out of ten four out of ten it freaked me the fuck out like i couldn't even sleep that night but then i was like oh man if i don't sleep i want to turn into a zombie i feel like the mothman was trying to warn me like don't watch this video but i watched it well you know i mean that's really your own free will but um drummers tried to tell you yeah i mean you know so what you're saying this mothman um basically was saying don't click anything else but me just do research on me what you should have been doing but well that's not. true yeah straight <laughs> that's that's true that's what i get for pulling the rob stone approach so you know skeptic corner over here this is a, this could be a new segment uh skeptic i like corner. that skeptic so corner. you know possible explanations of the mothman uh can be cited as the sandhill crane which is uh, mm. uh you know it's a bird almost as tall as a man um, which has Have red spots. Have you guys spots. seen that fucking thing? It's ugly. 
I don't even think it's. There's no way. If I saw that, I would not think. Oh my god, that's a humanoid. Well, yeah, that's no shit. Man. But I'm saying <laughs> yeah. that thing is still pretty creepy. Uh, yeah, but still, you know the difference between a crane and a human. A man. <laughs> people legs. in West Virginia might not. <laughs> you ever seen <laughs> Wrong Turn? So a sandhill crane, uh, barn owl. Some say. <laughs> Um, big just a fucking huge owl now you know <laughs> yeah i guess seven feet tall. so i mean oh this could play into the other theory i mean not so much skeptic corner but as rob was saying you know this contractor who built the tnt area which was a munitions plant allegedly in world war ii also responsible with building uh the plant where they did the manhattan project in tennessee yes if i'm not correct and area 51 Two of the highest level secret um, what, what, structures, bases, if you want to call them. Um, Department of Energy. Yeah. Uh, the same contractor built this TNT area. Now, some say this is like, you know, a government experiment gone wrong or even like uh, they had some sort of like chemical thing get into the water, you know, mixed with the bird's DNA. Well, it is a toxic waste dump site now. Well, so. it's also a wildlife refuge now. So, well, it's, it's actually both. Yeah. Isn't Silent Hill up in West Virginia too? Like, there's well, all sorts of crazy shit. Well, that's complete there. fiction. Yeah, that's no, a there's like, there, no, there's like a whole town that's like on. Well, that's fire. a cartoon. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're talking about that? Uh, oh, the gateway to town. hell. But it's oh, like okay. all on fire, like year round or some shit. I don't, it's oh, in no, West Virginia. No, no, there's a lot of weird fire. shit. There's a lot there's of weird shit. There's also a town in Pennsylvania no, that's like due to nuclear waste. It was like fully abandoned. That's what you're talking about, right? I'm talking about West Virginia, but I mean, they're right there. They're right next to each other. Okay, well, you know, that's, that's more research on our part. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, maybe, you know, look into that. Let us know. Could be a future, a episode. future episode. All right, all right, all right. A lot of future episodes, guys. Um, so, you know, the culture, the the film, the inspiration, uh, you know, this was the inspiration for Mothman Prophecies in 2002. Um. John Keel, he wrote the book, um, and he collaborated with this lady, Mary Heyer. Is that how you would say her name? Sure. I mean, you watched the documentary. Did they mention her? Uh, she I was saw. like the first one to kind of report on this in the newspapers. You know, people this were like, a "Crazy blonde lady." No, I think she had hair like freaking Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> And, like, those 50s, like, cat lady glasses. All right, all right. But this lady, like, she basically, people were like, you know, this is fucking who blah bullshit. We don't want to report on this. And she was like, no, this there's something to this. I'm going to, like, report on this in the newspapers. And there was even this guy, Gary uh, Barker, who wrote a book. On, he was also a ufologist, ufologist, uh, who wrote books on UFO sightings and stuff. And he wrote a book on the Mothman of Point Pleasant uh, f- that predated John Keel's book five years. And uh, so in 2002, we get the movie uh, Mothman Prophecies. This was loosely adapted from John Keel's book. Now, you guys both seen the film? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Why do you say unfortunately? Because I was trying to get information on the Mothman. It's all this Richard Gere drama bullshit. <laughs> oh, pl- well, you know Spare it's Hollywood. Me. It's dude. Hollywood. Yeah, you know they're going to play up Barely some even bullshit. get to see the damn Mothman. Well, yeah, you don't know, man. It's the mystery, the lore, the legend. They want you to see it in your head and freak yourself out, man. Yeah, I mean, I thought it all in all was a pretty good movie. I mean, it doesn't follow the book super closely, but... That's just because you're a Richard Gere fan. Well, you know, that's <laughs> nice besides and the point. Over that's here. besides the point. <laughs> this is a guy's favorite movie. Um, just so film, all you listeners know. Yeah, the film uh, <laughs> actually used the idea of Indrid Cold as uh, a character named Gordon. Uh, this was uh, loosely based on the character of Woodrow Derenberger, who we discussed saw Indrid Cold. Hmm. Um, Gordon now, Shumway, Alf, I'm just saying. <laughs> so... Uh, so, so you're saying Alf? Any other like uh, Mothman, you know, um, influences that we can think of besides the ticks? Besides cohort? the ticks, okay. Sidekick. Okay, well. You guys seen Jeepers Creepers? Mm. So is that confirmed? That was based on the Mothman? No, but I mean, think about it. Similar, very similar. Very tall guy, big ass wings, chasing cars around on the deserted highway at night. You know wooded area like out in the middle of nowhere now this will lead me so 
Adam has a creepy research story. I do as well. So I was doing some research for this. I saw Rob, you know, put together the initial outline. What? This is a story that freaked me out. You told oh, okay. yours. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I thought you said I had another one. And I no, was no, like, no, no, no. I do you. not. This is me. Oh, okay. Um, so you Rob said put you the- had a story. Oh, you had well, a story. You told yes, it. Yes, I did. Yes. Um, so Rob had put together this initial outline. Uh, I see this. In- Kudos to him for yeah. actually doing an outline. <laughs> yeah. Well, and not copying and pasting. Well, that's literally what he did, but um, <laughs> so it, I saw this in here, Jeepers Creepers, and I thought, hey, you know, I've never really looked into that. Let me Google this. So I am, bad you know, idea. yeah, bad idea. Black man was trying to warn you not to look see, into See, see? Yeah, I'm drunk. I'm three sheets <laughs> to the wind, uh, you know, because I all often do a lot of research when I'm drunk. Who doesn't? I mean, I love to read when I'm drunk. Who? You guys, yeah. That's how I pass college. Yeah, so it's writer's fuel. So, <laughs> you know, I'm laying in my bed drunk. Trademark fuel. Trademark to the uh, alcohol. Writer's fuel, that would be a good oh. beer or whiskey. Like, yeah. Hey. So, I am drunk, and I'm laying in my bed at night. Got all the lights off. I'm doing. I'm looking at this outline. I see the Jeepers Creepers thing in here. So, I think, hey, this is interesting. Let me look at this. Oh. I s- looked this up. Did you guys know the guy that directed Jeepers Creepers is was a convicted pedophile? Oh. He like molested some twelve year old boy, oh. and then on the set of one of his movies, and then he served like fifteen years in prison, and went on to to write and direct Jeepers Creepers and like uh, some other movie. I forget what it was. But I saw a picture of this guy. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is fucking crazy. Don't let anybody direct in Hollywood, apparently. Yeah, Harvey <laughs> Weinstein, you know. Oh. And then and then this guy, you know, molesting kids, and uh, so I look up, you know, inspiration. Oh, now I molesting didn't, kids? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> now I didn't see I didn't see anything rooted in Mothman, but I mean, he, you know, Rob was he's on to something. You can definitely see the uh, influences in there. The when he's on, he's on. Yeah. So I saw though that this was based on a um, apparently a unsolved mysteries episode, and it was of this guy Dennis Dupuis. Uh, look this guy up. Look up this episode. I mean, the opening scene is basically shot for shot. This guy basically shot his wife in the back of the head. This guy looks like a real creep. Shot his wife in the back of the head. This couple was out driving on Easter Sunday. You know, desolate country road, just like the opening of Jeepers Creepers. They, they, um, this van is like riding their ass, then goes around them. And then they see the van at this abandoned school, and they see this guy carrying a bloody sheet just like in Jeepers Creepers. Uh, and they fucking, this guy, boom, then he starts following him again. They pull over. This guy's changing his license plates on the side of the road or some shit. They go, these these guys, the ball's on these guys. They went back to the school and looked at the bloody sheet. And yeah, apparently this guy wasn't caught until the episode aired. I mean, look into it. It's this whole thing. So I'm, I'm looking this up. I'm freaking Blitz Creek drunk. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, holy shit. I hear a fucking glass break. It sounds like somebody shattered this window mm. in here. And I start freaking out. I like jump up and I fucking run towards my wall and I just like hit the wall. Like, you know how when you think, oh, if somebody breaks into my house, I'm going to fucking shoot them with a shotgun. Hell yes. So I go fucking boom beeline for the wall i run into the wall i don't have my glasses on i'm trying to find the light switch i'm freaking out and shaking no, i look this out this isn't harry potter you don't just run into walls well yes i'm aware i was trying to turn on the light switch hello and he hello. ran right into a wall <laughs> turn a base <laughs> on its side it hello. was dark dude and then i look out the window apparently some lady just dropped a beer outside <laughs> but uh yeah i mean look into this stuff and you know turn the lights off go in a closet if you guys want get real freaked out <laughs> go in the closet if you need to so <laughs> with that weird. being said this will bring us to some other sightings so uh some of the places that the Mothman, or you know, possibly there's multiple of these entities. Mothman, you're yeah, saying? Mothman, okay, okay. possibly multiple entities. Or moth ladies, you yeah. never know. You know, yeah, we're not assuming genders. Just, we don't. Do we're that just here. going off of the name Mothman. Uh, so you know, possible places that these things have visited are uh, a mine in Freiburg, Germany. Um, where a Mothman creature scared miners away shortly before the collapse, 
and one even known as the Blackbird of Chernobyl. Um, so, Adam, you want to read uh, this story for us? Beginning in April of 1986, the people in and around the town of Chernobyl began to experience sightings of a mysterious creature described as a large, dark, and headless man with gigantic wings and piercing red eyes. People affected by this phenomena experienced horrific nightmares, which I read was pretty consistent throughout the West Virginia, threatening phone calls, again, men in black, and first-hand encounters with the winged beast, which became known as the Blackbird of Chernobyl. Sightings are reported until a meltdown occurred and a fireman who would later die of radiation poisoning claimed to have seen a large humanoid creature with a 10-foot wingspan flying in the plumes of smoke. Um, Do you have any black metal on your (laughs) iPod? So although several sightings of this black bird of Chernobyl were reported in the days leading up to the Chernobyl disaster... Ooh, see? He's um, warning people. No documented sightings, though, have ever been specifically found. I mean, from what I could gather, this was mostly bullshit. Uh, No reports or evidence of this uh, prior to 2002 exist, and 2002 is when the movie came out. And in the movie, there's a scene where he says, you know, these Mothman have been sighted all over the world. And he specifically cites Chernobyl. So from what I gather, this was basically like a creepypasta that circulated on the internet. The Russians are just trying to cash in on the creepypastas, man. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily a Russian that wrote it. I think whoever wrote it just said, hey, this was in the movie. And, you know, with the fucking communism and Soviets, records are going to be scarce over there. Mm. So let's write this shit, you know. And, you know, there was also reported uh, two Mothman pictures taken in New York on 9-11. I did take a look at those. Yeah, this was also mostly bullshit rooted in creepypasta. Um, And, you know, as we know, 9-11 was not a natural disaster. It was an inside job. Um, I I also heard that he's been spotted in Chicago. Oh, yes. I mean, I've got a a segment for that. It's later in the outline. Yeah, let's go back further. Um... The Freiburg Shrieker. Um, this was on the morning of September 10th. 30 meters. 1978. Uh, the workers of a coal mine outside of Freiburg, Germany, encountered a dark man-shaped figure they thought to be wearing a trench coat at the entrance of the Oof. mine. As a few of the men approached the man, uh, he jutted out huge wings and let out a series of high-pitched shrieks. Uh, This creature prevented the men from entering the mine, which would eventually go on to collapse that very day and is estimated would have killed all 36 of them. That's crazy. Six months after this incident, uh, the Freiburg Shrieker incident, uh, less than one third of the workers present that day remained employed by the mine. Uh, Many of them who no longer uh, work at the mine remain unemployed and apparently suffer from serious mental disorders now let's go back even further uh this tale is known as the man dragon of zonte dam that's actually how i refer to rob you have to call me dragon (laughs) so (laughs) two dragons this one began in 1926 near the shante dam uh in southeastern china Uh, sightings of a large winged black figure began to spread around the fall uh, around the small farming communities located beneath the and now is how you would say that Zante Dam Zante Dam I don't speak the knees dude Uh, Zante Dam the creature uh, reportedly was uh, seen hovering above the dam and frightened several people who saw it on the afternoon of January 19th, 1926, the Jante Dam suffered a massive structural failure. Uh, it collapsed, sending over 40 billion gallons crashing into the farming villages below, and several villages were entirely destroyed, and when the water was finally drained, the death toll was over 15,000. Uh, the events surrounding the collapse of the dam have led many researchers to suggest the creature called the Mandragon uh, is actually the same 
dark-winged apparition seen flying over uh, the location of several other disasters, also known as the Blackbird of Chernobyl, the Freiburg Shrieker, and the more famous Mothman of West Virginia. Now, all of this uh, leads some to hold the belief that the Mothman is a harbinger of doom, Adam, I second that. Say, yep, yep. a herald of impending disasters, an omen, if you will. Um, Damien, this was all for you. The creature seems to uh, vanish after each disaster occurs and is nearly impossible to study, and to this day, all accounts of the mysterious figure remain Figure. unsolved mm. so now we'll get into the I mean guys the Mothman he lives the Mothman uh, sightings go on to this day um, this article is from the Fortean Times and is basically um, so there's a bunch of modern day sightings in Chicago well, the south side of Chicago so uh there has basically been i mean this started in like uh maybe 2011 um there's been 66 reported sightings of a large flying humanoid in the chicago and greater illinois area Uh, some in michigan and even wisconsin um these descriptions, these sightings, they basically match the same reports that uh, took place in Point Pleasant. Uh, you know, big winged humanoid creature. Uh, there have been a couple of photos that I saw and a bunch of like uh, blogs and stuff like that. And there's even this timeline, which you can find on singularfortean.com. Uh, this documents all of these sightings, um, you know, going as far back as uh, 97 in Illinois and taking us all the way up into uh, May 9th, 2018. This year, huh? Yeah, I mean, this oh, guy... Just a week ago. Yeah, this guy even got a, a ago? Uh, camera. I'll actually put the photo on the uh, Instagram. How about that? And... Um, you know, if you have any sightings, I mean, what do you think this means? What do you guys take this as? There's some something, something going to happen in Chicago? Have you ever been to Chicago? The place is a shit show. I'm Chirac, sure dude, yeah, highest dude. murder rate. I mean, who knows what could happen? Anything can happen, am I right? Leroy I Brown. I can't call it. <laughs> Leroy Brown, yes. So Baddest man in town. Uh, Stay away from the south side, guys. Yeah, but all I mean, all that being said, uh, Mothman, you know, huge... Um, I mean, Mothman is basically responsible for the, like, economy of Point Pleasant. I mean, starting in 2002, after the movie, the Mothman Festival began, uh, and it is held on the third weekend of every September in downtown Point Pleasant. Uh, It's located right next to the Mothman Museum, and they even have a Mothman statue. Sounds like we need to have a live episode there in September, boys. Uh, that's a yes oh yeah, for me. I mean, okay. this festival has a huge variety of vendors, uh, guest speakers, live music, food and events. I mean, it's like a state fair, but for <laughs> a for spe- freaks. yeah, for the Mothman, cryptid uh, lovers. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, apparently people from all over the world go to learn about the Mothman. Now, I've never been to this festival, but I would love to go. Never say never. I might take some time off in September to go check this thing out. We'll hit the Mothman Festival in West Virginia and then find the Monkey Man Festival. Where's that? Monkey Man! Okay. I'll go fuck myself. There's a festival for that? If not, we should start one. What about Birdman? I only love Birdman. (laughs) What about Bird Person? You crazy for that one. What about Mr. Wynn? (laughs) I like simple job at restaurant. So, yeah, Mothman Festival. I mean, would you guys be interested? Hell yeah, brother. Point Pleasant, if you're if you're listening, let us know. Like, hey, who's yeah, going to put us up? Feel or? free to let us know your Mothman stories if you have any. I mean, I've never met anybody that's specifically seen the Mothman. Except Shout out on Point an Pleasant. episode of The Tick. Yeah, except maybe an episode of The Tick, um, which I guess is a far nicer Mothman than <laughs> this thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Mothman basically sighted all around the world, you know, uh, different sightings. Uh, there's a ton of um, 
Mothman sightings reported, uh, short sightings that, you know, we just didn't have the time to go into. Uh, do some investigating on the Mothman. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, if you see him, watch out. Yeah, I mean, wa- keep a close eye on your surroundings if uh, you see this creature flying around because apparently um, somebody somewhere close is going to die. Jesus Christ. <laughs> But yeah, what else we got on the Mothman, guys? That's it, and that's all, baby. Uh, you got you guys two are jobs un- right Harbinger of bad doom. <laughs> 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 As harbinger opposed to good doom. doom. Is it Harbinger? I don't know. It is Harbinger. Of it's probably yes. harbinger. harbinger of Doom, an omen of disaster. You sound like you're talking about a superhero. A bringer of bad news. I mean, Mothman bearer, basically is. Bearer of bad news. Yeah, bearer of bad Harbinger, news. Harbinger, you're right. Harbinger. Harbinger. My fault. So there we have it, the Mothman, guys. And once again, if you want to get at us, slide in those DMs, Podcast from Outer Space on IG, Podcast from Outer Space at gmail.com if you're still in the emails. And, guys, we still got a couple of stickers left, so if you want some, let us know. They're going fast. We're almost out of them. And once again, this podcast is brought to you by Pamp Coffee. You can get at them on Instagram now. It's Pamp underscore coffee. Uh, You can also slide into that Etsy shop. Come on. Etsy.com slash shop slash Pamp Coffee. That's P-A-M-P, people. Pamp Coffee. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in, guys, and we will see you on the next episode. I will see you then, or I will see you on another time. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Yesterday, yesterday, country road.